Remember the El Clasico during the 2010s? It was Messi vs Ronaldo, Mourinho vs Guardiola, and it was sold as the biggest game in world football. What it actually was, was a 90-minute slugfest featuring hard tackles, dirty tricks and a ton of complaining to the referee and diving. However, this game sold so well amongst casuals who had no idea about football but posted Hala Madrid on their Facebook wall twice a year that a week before the game and a week after the game, all everybody could talk about was the El Clasico. Wayne Rooney could have been pictured stark naked getting a piggyback ride from Peter Crouch through the center of Liverpool and people would still care about what Pepe said about Guardiola before the game. It is true however that few rivalries have captured the attention of the entire world quite like the El Clasico. The game has been played around 300 times and throughout history each time it truly is an event, whether for the right or the wrong reasons. So, with such a heated rivalry, motivated in part by a very real struggle for independence and the history of oppression, you'd imagine that not many players are brave enough to pull on the shirt of both teams. Despite that, in total there have been 38 players who have suited up for both Real Madrid and Barcelona since the first El Clasico in 1902, and here are 8 of the most famous. 1. Ronaldo Barcelona picked up the electric Brazilian talent in 1996, after he had lit up the Dutch league for the past two years, for a world record fee of $19 million. His time at the club was relatively short but oh so sweet. Having signed an 8-year contract, he scored 47 goals in 49 games, as defenses seemed to have no idea how to stop him. However, at the end of that very first season, a contract issue meant that Inter could pay his release clause and take Ronaldo to the Giuseppe Meazza. One Ballon d'Or, one World Cup trophy, and one destroyed patellar tendon later, he joined Florentino Perez Galacticos in 2002. His Madrid career was plagued by injuries and weight issues, especially in the latter stages, but from time to time, the genius that saw him obliterate teams single-handedly shone through. Arguably, his commercial success was even more important than his on-field performances. The team he was part of firmly revived Real's commercial power and image in the eyes of the world and paved the way for the super club that they are today. 2. Luis Figo Controversy surrounded Luis Figo even before his transfer to Barcelona. In 1995, he signed contracts with both Juventus and Parma, which saw him banned from joining an Italian club for two years. That same year, he signed for Barcelona, but was loaned back to Sporting due to a rule stating that Portuguese players could only move to foreign clubs during a specified time frame within the transfer window. In one of football's greatest what-if moments, Manchester City also missed out on the signing of Figo due to the same role. During his time at Barcelona, he helped them to a La Liga and the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup and became a fan favorite. However, in the 2000 summer transfer window, he would break Catalan hearts. During the election campaign for the Real Madrid presidency, Florentino Perez made the outlandish promise to sign Figo if he was elected. And just like people laughed at Trump's promises saying he'll never become president, Good old Florentino won enough voters over with his football populism that he became president. Real met the 62 million euro release clause and Figo became the number one enemy in Barcelona. At his first Camp Nou appearance, in the white shirt of Real, the stadium was a cauldron that erupted with insults and jeers every time he touched the ball. Missiles would fly down from the stands, with the fans seemingly emptying their pockets in order to express their disgust at the one who was deemed the chosen one and yet betrayed them. The story writes itself really. In 2002, the most iconic image of Figo's career was captured when a severed pig's head was thrown next to him as he attempted to take a corner kick, amongst the usual projectiles made of lighters, oranges and mobile phones. To this day, some older Barcelona fans still refer to him as Judas. 3. Marcos Alonso The only currently active footballer to have played for both clubs, Marcos Alonso was a Madrid youth product and made only one appearance for the club in 2010. From there, he took a path less trodden that took him to Bolton Wanderers, Fiorentina and Sunderland before settling in at Chelsea, but not before he crashed his car into a wall in 2011, driving at 70 miles per hour in the wet whilst drunk. Since he was a talented footballer, he got off scot-free and was able to pursue his dreams, unlike the 22-year-old girl he killed. After six years spent at Chelsea, he signed for Barcelona on a free transfer, meaning that the Alonso family keeps rotating between Spain's most successful clubs, his dad having played for Real and his grandfather having represented both Atletico and Barca. 4. Luis Enrique 
Luis Enrique made over 500 appearances in a very successful career, which started out at his local club Sporting Gijón. His goal scoring and high work rate prompted Real Madrid to sign him in 1991. Despite winning the La Liga, the Copa del Rey and the Supercopa de España with Real, he stated after his retirement that he had never felt appreciated by the fans and did not have good memories in his time in Madrid. This became even more apparent, as after his 1996 move to Barca, he became a fan favorite. This did not happen overnight however, as the Cules were initially reluctant to cheer for a player that had represented their Madrid rivals. His dedication towards the club ultimately won them over, helping Barcelona win two titles, two cups and the Cup Winners Cup. After his retirement, Enrique remained in the Barcelona setup, eventually becoming Barcelona's first team manager between 2014 and 2017, leading them to a treble. 5. Julian Lopetegui The former Wolves boss did not have a career as illustrious as Luis Enrique, only making one appearance in Real's goal and moving away from the club in 1991. After playing for Logroñez and helping them stay in the league, Barcelona decided to take a punt and signed him in 1994. Much like with Real, Lopetegui could not hold down a starting position, losing out to Carles Busquets. And yes, for those of you wondering, that is Sergio Busquets' dad. In one last similarity to Enrique, he also managed one of his former clubs, Real, but lasted just a few months before getting the boot. 6. Samuel Eto'o not many people remember Eto'o having been a Real Madrid player, partly because he spent much of his time out on loan. Having been part of Real's youth setup, Eto'o joined Mallorca in 2000, where his performances started to pick up and after 4 years he was hot property on the European transfer scene. Real made an attempt to re-sign their former player, but Barcelona came out on top. At Barcelona, he really rubbed salt into Real Madrid's wounds, becoming one of the greatest strikers of his generation, scoring 130 goals for the Blaugrana. His time in Catalonia culminated in a treble winning year where a front three of Thierry Henry, Lionel Messi and Eto'o scored 100 goals between them. After another treble, this time at Inter, he embarked on a journeyman career that saw him play for seven more clubs before retiring in 2019. 7. Michael Laudrup Laudrup is weirdly loved and held in high regard by both sets of fans, despite taking part in two 5-0 demolitions, once for each club but always on the winning side. He initially moved to Italy from his native Denmark, and after spells with Lazio and Juve ended in disappointment, Johan Cruyff, his childhood idol, convinced him to join his project at Barca. With the number of foreigners allowed in the squad limited to three, Laudrup joined Koman and Stoichkov as part of the new Barcelona Dream Team. However, after winning four consecutive La Ligas and one European Cup and with Laudrup still playing superbly, Cruyff signed Romario. This came to mark the downfall of his relationship with the manager, as Cruyff left him out for the 1994 European Cup final against Milan, which Barca lost 4-0. After the final, Fabio Capello remarked that Laudrup had been the player he had feared the most. This prompted Laudrup to move to Real Madrid, however he maintained at the time that he was simply looking for a new challenge and did not seek revenge. Immediately after his move, Real won the title and Laudrup hung around for one more year before moving to Japan. Before we get to the last player, a few honorable mentions are in order, namely Bernd Schuster who moved from Barcelona to Real where he dominated the league and then to Atletico, Javier Saviola who could never perform for Barca or Real as well as his talent promised, and Robert Prozinecki who was signed by Real off the back of winning the 1991 European Cup with Red Star Belgrade and later moved to Barca but could not replicate his success at either club. And if you want to be honorably mentioned, subscribe to my channel so you never miss one of these bangers. 8. Gheorghe Hagi Romania's best ever player gained both of his moves, first to Real and then Barcelona, off the back of two World Cup performances. In 1990, after reaching the round of 16, he signed for Los Blancos, but his time at the club proved unsuccessful, only winning one Supercopa de España. After two years, he moved to Italy with Brescia and would once again play a starring role for Romania in 1994 at the World Cup in the US, scoring the goal of the tournament. Barca took a leaf out of Real's book and signed him, but he only won another Supercopa in his two years in Catalonia. He would ultimately find success with Galatasaray, attaining cult status in Istanbul. Thank you so very much for watching, let me know who your favorite player on this list is and I will see you next time.